This video is meant to be a helpful guide for Epic Flight Academy students to understand how to properly log hours when time building. This is not meant to be a substitute for your responsibility to have adequate knowledge of what is in the FAR. The guidelines that follow are based on FAR 61.51 and 91.109. Here are some general guidelines for time building. When two pilots are flying in a single pilot aircraft, like a C-172S, only the pilot in command can log the time under specific circumstances. Only the pilot in command may log any landings conducted during his or her leg of the flight. A pilot cannot taxi, take off, or land the aircraft under the hood in simulated instrument conditions. Since each tenth of an hour equates to six minutes, it should take at least 0.5 for a pilot to start, taxi, run up, take off, land, taxi in, and shut down on each flight that cannot be simulated instrument. Remember that EPIC does not allow time builders to fly in actual instrument conditions. Safety pilot names must be in your logbook, or you have committed logbook falsification, which is punishable by a severe fine, up to five years in prison, and revocation of your pilot's license. Remember, when the pilot in command is not under the hood, he or she is the pilot in command, not you. You should not be taking the controls or arguing with the pilot in command unless you feel that he or she is about to violate an FAR or put your lives in danger. Even then, there are more appropriate ways to handle the situation. Let's look at an example time building flight by Tom and Jerry. They are going to KSAV Savannah, Georgia. After thoroughly completing their flight plans and politely asking a flight instructor to review their work and sign their time building cards, they get an aircraft from dispatch and head out to pre-flight. Tom will be the pilot in command for the first leg. Let's say that it took them 2.2 on the hobs to get up to KSAV. When they park at the FBO, they should note their times for this leg. Tom and Jerry will each have different times to log on each leg of the flight, so it is important to log the times for each leg separately to ensure that times are logged legally and correctly. As mentioned earlier, it was a total flight of 2.2 on the way to KSAV. Tom and Jerry's logbook should read as follows assuming that Tom was the pilot in command under the hood in simulated conditions from right after takeoff to just before landing. Tom's logbook should be filled out like this. You'll notice that the total time is 2.2, but that the simulated instrument is only 1.9. This is because of the 0.3 it took them to taxi, take off, and land the aircraft. If this flight was at night, or any approaches were conducted, those should be logged as well. He also made sure to log the name of his safety pilot as required by the FAR. If any approaches are conducted, the pilot in command must be under the hood down to the approach minimums for the approach to be logged. You do not need to deduct anything from the cross-country time. On the same leg of the flight to KSAV, Jerry's logbook should look like this. You'll notice that Jerry may only log the 1.9 that Tom was under the hood. His total time may not exceed that amount. This is because when Tom is not under the hood, Jerry is not the pilot in command and may not log any time in the aircraft. Jerry is just a passenger, and passengers do not log flight time. But again, if the flight was at night, Jerry may log the time at night but not exceed 1.9. If an approach was conducted, he may not log the approach because he was not the pilot in command in simulated conditions or actual instrument conditions. You do not log any cross-country time as a safety pilot. Again, it is important to park the aircraft at your destination and take a moment to note all of your times for the leg you just flew, in addition to reviewing the weather and reviewing your flight plan for the return leg. Let's look at our return leg. Our two time builders will switch seats this leg and Jerry will be the pilot in command for the trip home. Let's say the total time on the way back was only 2.0 thanks to a nice tailwind. Jerry's logbook should look like this you'll see that Jerry only logged 1.5 simulated instrument. This makes sense because 0.5 was their noted time for start, taxi, takeoff, and landing on this leg. He also made sure to note the name of his safety pilot as required by the FAR. Now, let's look at Tom's logbook. You'll notice that Tom may only log 1.5 out of the entire flight since he is the safety pilot and can only log time when Jerry is under the hood in simulated instrument conditions. Also remember that as a safety pilot, Tom may not log any approaches or landings just like in the previous leg. 
We hope that these guidelines and examples will help make it easier for you to understand your responsibilities when logging your time building flights. If you have any further questions, please be sure to ask your flight instructor.